Hey guys, welcome to Cooking with Crusha. Today I have my friend Donna Schaffner with me, and we are going to start off with a Bloody Mary. Sound good? Absolutely. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> How much vodka do you want? Do you want measured or poured? <laughs> Just pour it in there. Pour it in there? Go big or go home. There we go. <laughs> and go home. Might as well just put it all. Okay. Now we're going to get some horseradish in there. Do you measure this? You just take a guess. Eyeball. Do you like horse rash? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Spicy. I like it spicy. Some W sauce because I can't pronounce it. Worcestershire. That's what we call it. Wor Worcester. Worcestershire. W sauce. W. That works. W. We'll put a tiny bit of lime. Splash. Splash. Let's take it up a notch with some Old Bay. A couple squeezes. Smell that. that. Yeah, yummy. Mmm. And some peri peri okay. hot sauce. This will go along with our theme today of peri peri chicken. This is hot. So we're just going to put a couple little dabs in there. And then our Bloody Mary mix. And you can get this Bloody Mary mix anywhere. Martin, Walmart, Walmart, Martin, and about anywhere. Okay. Your local liquor store. Liquor store. Okay. Ding ding. Over shake, 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 shake. Over shake, 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 shake. Shake, shake. Is that good? Oh, shake it some more. Oh, some more. <laughs> you have a good one. <laughs> All right. this we might not finish the show it's gonna get good <laughs> mm, looks beautiful just need some shrimp and crab legs and candied bacon mm, yum okay right, are we ready all right cheers, cheers. Mm. that will work yeah delicious Okay, Donna, we are going to finish our Bloody Marys, and when we come back, we're going to make peri-peri chicken, rice, a nice salad, and then we're going to move into a different region and do Jamaican patties Ooh. and potatoes. Sounds good. Can't wait. <laughs> Cheers. Hagerstown Ford continues to be your leader in car sales up and down the I-81 corridor. We will beat any and all competitors' prices. And we've made buying a new car easier than ever with one-day delivery better than Amazon and a return policy better than Walmart. Your satisfaction is our guarantee. If you don't like it, simply return it and we'll come pick it up. No questions asked. Why would you shop anywhere else? At Hagerstown Ford, we take great pride in our community and supporting our local student athletes. That's why Hagerstown Ford is the official car dealership of Shepherd Rams quarterback Tyson Bajant. Our remote buying process has made new car shopping so easy, you'll never even set foot in a dealership. Simply go to HagerstownFord.com and click on the car you want to buy it, or use the Axel Auto app. It's that easy. You can order your new car on any device. Go to HagerstownFord.com and get your new car signed, sealed, and delivered from Hagerstown Ford. to go with our salad. Okay, I have French bread and we are going to cut it in half like so. And then we're going to make long cuts. Love the way this, smell, uh, this bread smells delicious. So fresh. I've never made my own croutons before. Really? So first, yeah. Okay. Maybe do this way. And then you can make them as big or as small as you 
like. We're gonna do some nice size ones you here. Big croutons. And then after I get this cut, I'm gonna have you put the spread on that pan. Okay. Do we need to coat the pan with anything, or just toss no? It we will do that after we put okay. all of it on there. Single layer. Yeah, sure. And then it's... what you want is you want to put it up on here and try to use a pan that's big enough to where they're not overlapping, so they mm -hmm. get a nice golden, even, even. And then okay. let you pour okay. vegetable oil or olive oil, whichever you prefer. A nice, lot, a little, a nice, we, we saturating, not saturating, but a nice amount. There we go. And then we're going to add some garlic powder. And that depends on if you like garlic ah, or not. Love we garlic. love garlic, yeah. so nice and garlicky. That's good, you think? That's good. Okay. And then we're going to add some Italian seasoning. Mm -hmm. And you do I the like. same method when you're making stuffing. Mm -hmm. Instead of the Italian seasoning, you'll, you would use poultry seasoning. Okay. And we're going to do some salt and pepper. And it's as easy as that. Pop it in the oven until it's golden brown and toasted. And you have croutons. Yum! You can add Parmesan cheese or any other Ooh, seasonings or flavors that you like. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put this in the oven. This is what it looks like before. Again, the temperature for that is? It would be on broil. On broil? And you have to watch because it will burn. Yeah. A reputation for caring. A legacy of service. At Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations, it's been our story since 1880. A family-owned business with three locations, we are closely connected to the communities we serve. And we're here for our neighbors in their times of loss. We support the needs and wishes of families and we create services that reflect the life and the character of the departed. We offer traditional services and burial, as well as many options for cremation, customized remembrances, and memorial services. Pre-planning your arrangements ensures your wishes are carried out while removing the burden of responsibility from family members. We recognize and support the work of local hospice and veterans organizations for the roles they play in our community. Serving the entire Eastern Panhandle and Tri-State area, Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations retains its family atmosphere and stays true to its roots. Contact us for advanced planning or at your time of loss. We're here when you need us. Use the whole bottle. 
And then we're going to use some garlic here. Okay. And we're going to do one small clove of garlic, which is equal to a half a teaspoon. There we go. But again, I like garlic. Like garlic, so we're going to go a little bit more than that. A heavier than it's that. It's a preference. Good, maybe? There we go. Sure. Yeah. And then we'll taste it. We need more. We'll add we'll more. Add. That's the great thing about cooking is it's, mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want. I wish you could always add uh, maybe garlic add powder or garlic salt. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let's just add some salt and pepper. Okay. I like pepper. And I like salt. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There we go. And again, that's all to your taste preference. If you awesome. can't have salt because you have a dietary restriction, yeah. you don't have to put the salt. Okay. So, uh, next we're going to add extra virgin olive oil. Okay. And we're going to do about a half a cup of that. Are we measuring this one or yeah, are we just squirting it in there? Okay. Cup. That's about good. Awesome. And then. And then we need lemon juice, yeah? Oh, that's lemon right. Juice. We forgot the lemon. Okay. Cut. You want to cut the lemon? Yep. And to get the best amount of lemon juice out of your lemon, you want to roll it. Now feel the difference of that lemon. Oh, yeah. It's nice and soft. Absolutely. Yeah. Now cut that in okay. half. Just cut it in half there and squeeze, and squeeze it in. in. How much does it say in the About it's a about tablespoon? About a so. tablespoon or so, but. Oh. Just squeeze them. You're gonna let you shake this like you did the bloody Mary. Yeah, Christmas. let's shake it up. All right. I'll let you All right, this. here we go. All right, over here. Mixologist. <laughs> Mix it up. And that this is oh, the reason that you need a tight lid. Yeah. Because if you try to use a Tupperware container and the lid's not tight, mm -hmm. you're gonna have a mess. Yeah, that's a great idea. All right. It's a beautiful color. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Let's get a little container and put it in there. And do a taste test. Oh, it smells so good. So do a spoon for you and a spoon for me. Right. And let's see if we need to add anything different. Okay. Mm. Mm. I think it needs more vinegar. I sure. think you're right. Because mm -hmm. I can still taste the oil. Mm -hmm. Yep, I can taste the salt. So let's add and some maybe more some more vinegar. garlic too. And again, cooking is totally different than baking. Baking is scientific. You have to be exact yeah. with baking or your item is not right. going to turn out. Just a little bit of vinegar. And I think a little more mustard. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. There you go. Uh -huh. <laughs> shake, shake, shake. us out of those, so. <laughs> it's kind of bland. I agree. Not gonna lie. Some salt. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't like my stuff. Hey, this is a, a recipe that I have never tried yeah. before, so this is all new. All new. Okay, let's try it now. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, oh so much better. Very good. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Delicious. Okay. Now we are going to set this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes to chill and let all the garlic mm. and everything Balloon marinate and, marinate. Mm. and marry each other. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Hi, this is Lauren from Orsini's right here in Martinsburg. Grilling is not just for the boys. We are a Platinum Traeger dealer carrying the Pro Series all the way up to the Timberline Series. We have every flavor of wood pellets along with accessories, rubs, sauces, not just Traeger, we carry Utz, Meat Church, Lanes, and Dizzy Pig. We also carry a full line of Yeti products. Orsini's has everything to complete your backyard. Visit us at 360 Hack Wilson Way or at Orsini's.com. Have 
uh, rinsed our spring lettuce. We're going to make a nice salad to accompany our peri peri chicken and our Jamaican patties. So we're going to put this in here, Donna. So this is an English cucumber. On our Facebook page, Cooking with Crescia, we had a viewer ask, what is an English cucumber and where do you get them? So an English cucumber is longer. It is a sweeter taste than a regular cucumber. You do not have to peel the English cucumbers. So you buy this in the store. Normally it's wrapped in a plastic wrap and it's in a different area than the regular cucumber. So we are going to cut this up. Would you like to cut it up or do you want me to cut it up? Sure, I can cut it. Huh? But I'm going to use this. Just nice thin slices. Okay, thin slices. Okay, and stop for just a second. Yeah. Do you see how this is mm -hmm. ribbed yeah. a little bit more than a regular cucumber that's yeah. smooth and has that wax on yeah. it? Yeah, a little... It, uh, Regular cucumbers have like a little poke, they poke you. You have, you have to rub that. Yeah, the little prickly spike. Yeah. When you yeah. take them off mm -hmm. out of the garden. Yeah. But when you buy them in the grocery store, they don't have these spikes yeah. because they put wax on them to mm -hmm. make them look pretty and last longer. Okay. But see how this has the ribs? Mm hmm. And it's nice thin skin. It's not as thick yeah. as the regular cucumber. Mm -hmm. It smells good too. It's a good smell. It's good aroma. aroma. For our garden to yes. Grow. Now, baby carrots are a preference. Mm -hmm. You can either put them in whole, like this, or you can buy them already shredded in a bag at the grocery store, or even um, sliced. Okay. Or you can do it yourself. So you can either cut them in half, and then in half again, which is a julienne mm -hmm. type uh, julienne yeah. carrot, or then you have your regular sliced carrots, which is that, or you can put them in whole. So it's a preference of how you want your salad to look. So we can just go ahead and toss these in here. I think we're going to do them whole. Nice color. Nice color. Mm -hmm. And then again, with your cherry tomatoes. Some people like to just use them whole to make it look nice and pretty like mm -hmm. this. Or you can do both. You can halve them. Mm -hmm. Put them in halves. Yeah. And there's the little hack. You can put them on a plate and then put a plate on top and then cut through the middle and it cuts them all at yep. the same time. Or you can do slices. Again, it's your preference. Yeah. It's not written anywhere that in your salad you have to use whole tomatoes. And then my favorite, walnuts, almonds. You can use cranberries. Ooh, I like cranberries. Dried cranberries would be really good in a salad. Add a couple of those. And then plant. 
Parmesan cheese. I'm going to let you do that part. <laughs> Are you afraid of the grater? <laughs> I am a bit afraid of the grater, yes. Fresh Parmesan oh. is the best way to go because it's full of flavor. When you buy it in the bags, it's already uh, shredded or grated or however you get it. It tends to lose flavor. Yeah. And then, fun fact, the rind. See this dark rind that's like waxy all the way around the edges? Yeah. Don't throw that away. You know, they frugal. Right. You cut that off. And if you're making chicken soup or uh, a fettuccine sauce or something mm -hmm. like that, if you cut this rind and put it down in your sauce, obviously you remove it before you serve it. Yeah. It gives all that extra flavor to whatever dish yeah. that you're creating. Good tip. And then, of course, we have some queso cheese. It's one of my favorites. Oh, this is so delicious. I like this on top of my rice. Mm, so good. On the, oh, smell that? The Mexican corn. Oh, so yes. good. Yes. Again, we need smell vision. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh, look how beautiful that is. And look at the salad. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Add those croutons in. And then, last but not least, mm. our freshly made croutons. Beautiful. They smell so delicious. And I wish you guys could smell this. This whole salad took us, what, 10 minutes? Yeah. Tops? Absolutely. Between yeah. the roasting of the croutons mm -hmm. and the cutting of the vegetables. Yep. You now have a beautiful salad to serve to your guests. Gorgeous. In whatever you do, it's good to go the extra mile. But when we go to Antwerp, Belgium to buy a diamond for you, we go the extra 7,982 miles, the distance from here to Antwerp. And when you see your new diamond, the sparkle in your eyes will tell us it was worth it to go the distance. Hi, I'm Lori from Bechtel Jewelers. Dave and I are leaving soon on a diamond buying trip. And here's what going the extra 7,982 miles means for you. A more beautiful diamond than you thought possible for your money. Antwerp is the diamond capital of the world. We work directly with the men and women who buy and cut the diamonds. We personally inspect thousands of diamonds to pick only the best out of each parcel. And believe me, we reject hundreds of diamonds for each one we buy. Would you like to own a diamond that will blow by other diamonds in a flash? We're ready to go the extra 7,982 miles for you. See us at Bechtel Jewelers, Route 11 South of 51 in Inwood. just tend to be a lot more juicy. Yes. Stay stay moist. They do. They don't dry out as fast as what the breast, the white meat. Does. So this Gina. is a peri-peri spice. So this is actually ground up 
peri-peri covers. Mm -hmm. And do you code that on both sides or just one? I code it on just one okay. side with this because mm -hmm. we're going to use this marinade. Okay. And this marinade, you can actually now find it in your local grocery stores. This one here, I have not seen this size in our <laughs> local grocery stores. Uh, Mike and I did bring this back from Africa when we went over about a year or so ago. So we try to bring some spices back with us. Um, peri peri peppers, from what I have read, I've never grown them. But apparently they're super easy to grow. You need a 10 inch pot and you can grow them either inside or outside. And they grow in a bush. And then once flowers start to form, kind of like strawberries, you know, you have, you have yeah. the, the bush for the strawberries Blossom. and the flowers, mm -hmm. the blossoms, then the strawberry starts growing. It's the same way with the peri peri pepper or the African bird eye pepper is what the actual name is. Okay. So we have our peri peri spice and then I have a chicken spice and I uh, apologize. Uh, I don't know if you can find chicken spice or the peri peri here in the States. I'm sure you could find something pretty close. You know, you could go to like Orsini's or someplace like that where they have all the grilled spices, that type of thing. Um, they have all kinds of different combinations. That smells then good. we're going to do some fresh ground pepper. Some salt. Oh, and by the way, the salt that I have in this shaker is sea salt. And then after we do that, go ahead and use this big one here. I just wanted to show the size of what you can find in the local markets mm -hmm. here. And then we are going to coat and I'm a little bit generous with this now than I was before because now that you can get I can it here. find it in the States. <laughs> I don't have to right. use just a tiny bit until we make it back to Africa mm -hmm. or we special order it from a wholesaler. Once you do this, I know you're feeling about chicken. So <laughs> I will <laughs> put I my like hands in here and <laughs> you want to flip it over it. and kind of coat both sides of the chicken. Yes. And then as you do this, it'll help marinate much better. And of course you start, your uh, thighs are mm -hmm. moving around in here and opening up. They're not as tight. Now are these bone-in thighs that you have these here? These are bone-in mm -hmm. thighs. And you are on a diet or don't like skin or whatever, you can also mm -hmm. buy the boneless, skinless. Mm -hmm. I tend to do now a lot of keto recipes which call for um, a lot of the boneless, skinless type uh, chicken. And those kind of, once they take the bone out of it, it uh, kind of opens up almost like butterfly. Yeah, you would. and you don't need so to kind of open it either. Bone, bone, bone in. Out. Bone so, in, yeah. you have to cook longer mm -hmm. because you want to make sure that it's not pink around the bone. That's good to know. So now that we have this mm. completely coated and marinated, if you're short on time, you can go ahead and pop this in the oven at 375 and get a nice coating on the outside of it mm -hmm. and serve it. But the longer it marinates, the better flavor that sure. soaks into the skin. Mm -hmm. So we are going to, we used a pan that can be transferred from the refrigerator. Yeah to the oven, to the table. Yeah. Less mess. Sure. <laughs> um, now, if you're feeding a larger family, yeah. you're going to need a, a bigger pan. Right. But that's a good tip, though, because, um, you know, like most of us, we, uh, you know, we work, we, we come home, we get the kids to sports, we get home. Absolutely. We, 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 the, the, the less we have to clean up, the better. So, um, and, and I love these pans. Oh, uh, the Kefalon pans are amazing. My favorite. Mm -hmm. Great heat conductor. And I always put my oven on 375 on a convection okay. because convection is a fan which circulates the heat all the way around your food. So it's not just cooks evenly. Cooks evenly. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and pop this in the fridge, let it marinate. While we do this, we're going to make the rice to go along with it.
Looking to buy a home in the Eastern Panhandle? Having trouble getting your house sold? Then call Chris Ross and the Milestone Real Estate Group at Keller Williams. A Martinsburg High School graduate, Chris knows the local market and he's proven it as the number one real estate team in West Virginia in 2019. Milestone Real Estate Group at Keller Williams. Phone 304-579-7349 or go to callchrisross.com. Let's celebrate your real estate milestone together. dry ingredients and the butter. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and add the egg, water, and vinegar all the way around the edges. There you go. Okay. Now your food processor is only going to incorporate this so much. Once it gets to the point where it's your food processor is working hard mm -hmm. and it sounds like, okay, we need to stop. Then you take it out and we'll roll it on the okay. counter to get the rest of the dough. And if you pulse it, it helps drop the top of the flour mm -hmm. to the bottom. Now 
hear that? Yes. So that means sound, sure. it's time mm-hmm. to take this out. Get the stuff out of the way. We're going to get some flour. So now that we have this type of consistency, mm-hmm. you want to take the blade out. Be careful not to cut yourself. Spatula. Now we're just going to dump it onto a floured surface. See that nice yellow color? That it's beautiful. Dough has? Mm-hmm. It smells. It smells good already. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to make a ball. Incorporate rest of this flour on the table mm-hmm. so because you don't want a sticky dough right. otherwise you can't work with it and with the butter you need to work rather quickly so your dough doesn't get overworked and warm so we just want just enough and you don't have to use everything that's on your counter okay either butter have a little bit too much then not mm-hmm. enough when your hands are in the dough and you're working alone right and I and, and what we're working for is a dough that we can then roll out and fill with the meat mixture. Correct. Okay. And as soon as I finish rolling this, if mm-hmm. while I finish this, if you want to get yeah. some saran wrap, mm-hmm. yeah. we're going to wrap this, place it in the refrigerator until it chills. And while it does that, we will move on to the filling that goes in the in the pastry here. Okay. Now the good thing with this dough is. You don't have to use meats or proteins. This can be sweet or savory. Oh. Now, obviously, you wouldn't use the curry, curry. in right. the dough. You can omit that, and you can fill it with apples and make, like, apple empanadas. And so the Jamaican, Jamaican meat pie, it's the same dough as it is for... Gosh, look how pretty that is. The meat pies, and feel that. Nice consistency. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not sticking to you, really. It's or they call it. them... Hand pies. Mm-hmm. It's all the same thing. Empanada, meat pies, hand mm-hmm. pies, all the same. It just depends where you're eating it. Whether you're eating it in Africa, Brazil, uh, Puerto Rico, Costa Rica, mm-hmm. that determines what you call the actual uh, entree. All right. So you wrap it nice and tight, get all the air out, mm-hmm. shape it, pop this baby in the fridge, yeah. let her chill. And then we'll move on to our meat. And how long would you chill that for typically? Typically, I like to chill it for at least an hour. Okay. But Mm -hmm. you just want the butter to firm back up. Okay. Because that's what, when you bake it and roll Mm -hmm. it out and bake it, the butter is going to melt then and give you that flaky, Mm. nice buttery taste. And it looks like our rice is just about ready. Yay! Let's go ahead and put our peri-peri chicken in the oven at 375, depending on how thick your pieces of chicken art is how long you cook it. I would say that the chicken that we have is going to take about 45 minutes. Hi, my name's Corey, and I'm here at Orsini's in beautiful Martinsburg, West Virginia. We no longer specialize in only appliances. We have kitchen design, countertops, cabinets, flooring, and even a new 1,200 square foot sleep studio with brands such as Stearns and Foster, Sealy, and Tempur-Pedic. 304 267 7251. 360 Heck Wilson Way in Martinsburg. We price match the big box stores and we give back to our local community. Orsini's.com. Quite a plethora of spices here. Mm-hmm. 
here. We do. We want all these flavors to vary each other, incorporate the aroma in here. We're about there. Add in our recipe. And the recipe will be on our uh, Facebook page for this. This is about, we doubled the recipe, so this is about two, two and a half pounds of ground beef. That you, it's, it's like four little prongs, and yet, and yet, and you twist it. And that, and that works really well at separating the ground beef. Mm -hmm. It's made with uh, it's like oh, the like the silicone. Really? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Well, that's a tip you should have brought with you right. so you can show our viewers. Oh, I will make that note for next time. <laughs> we'll share that. I'm sure many of you at home know what I'm talking about. Is that something I you get like from Pampered Chef? Yeah. Or you can, I, Pampered Chef mine. does have one, but you can get one just about anywhere. I think any, anywhere you target, Walmart, you can pick that up. All right, so we're browning our ground beef. Now, we don't want it to cook completely through before we put our spices in. Otherwise, it's not going to incorporate the, fla the flavors as it should. We got a little bit of browner. And again, we are cooking, not baking, so everything is a preference to you. If there's something that you don't like or you like more of when you're cooking, you can completely adjust your spices, your seasonings. Mm -hmm. If you've got someone at home that um, might be a little more sensitive to the spice, the spices, you can cut it back a little bit if you need to, like this particular recipe. I Right, so if I'm making this bit. just for, you know, game night mm -hmm. for us, I will add all the jalapeno. If I'm making this for a nightly dinner with the kids, obviously, yeah. I'm not going to put that much nice. uh, spice with the jalapenos. Now, this ground beef seems to have a good bit of fat in it, so I'm actually going to drain some of this fat before we add the spices, and I think we're about there. Let me go ahead and drain some of this off. Next, great. It does smell delicious. Let's do some W sauce. 
sauce, W. Do a few squirts of that in there. I find that with ground beef, even when I'm making meatloaf, the the W sauce just adds another Absolute, flavor. Yes, I use it in my meatloaf as well. I use it in my ground beef when I make my spaghetti sauce. Mm. Use it in our Bloody Marys. Yeah. <laughs> Go W sauce. All right, let's kick it up a notch and add some pepper flakes. All right. Now these are red pepper flakes from your own garden. They are. We've dried them and put them in a mason jar. And for the lid that you see is actually the lid from an empty Parmesan container. That's so good. that's another hack. Okay. Yeah, these are good for any mason jar. Uh, save your Parmesan jars, uh, lids, and reuse Now they only those. fit the small mouth mason jars, okay. not the large mouth. And it's, again, the same way with the mayonnaise lids. You can save those so you have a solid lid when you're mixing dressings. Or if you have something that you want to put in the refrigerator and you don't want any air to get into it at all. Yeah. Let's now let's add our garlic. garlic. And the garlic, we're adding that in later because you don't want that to burn, right? Exactly. That's a scorch. If, if your garlic burns, it will actually give your food a bitter taste. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, it smells so delicious. This might not make it into the patties. <laughs> right? Might just get a spoon yeah. and start if eating. Right? Like if you're going keto and want to not eat the bread, you could put this in, um, in you know, in a salad. You could make a bowl. Absolutely. Uh, protein, yeah. Like a, like a, a salad Melt bowl. Melt some cheese over mm -hmm. top of it. Sure. Wrap it in a lettuce. Make a lettuce mm -hmm. wrap. Lettuce wrap. Oh, delicious. But I like carbs. <laughs> I like them too. They just don't like me. <laughs> Now we're going to add about a teaspoon of the cumin. Okay. Just a little more, that's not fine. A, not a lot of this, just good, you think? Uh, a little bit more. There okay. we go. Oh. Mm. So good. And then last but not least, we're going to add our beef broth. Okay, tell me when. Can go ahead and slowly start pouring that as I incorporate it. As you can hear now the sizzle has definitely sizzled down. Yes, sizzled down. <laughs> now we're going to wait before we add the second can. We want this to start to evaporate a little bit. Incorporate. So these are 14 ounce cans here. Store, you can get them in the big, bigger boxes as well. Carton. We're going to turn our heat up. Bring this to a boil. And a lot of these recipes would probably, you know, call for water, but you're right. If you use the beef broth or much or chicken broth flavor. and substitute or even vegetable, whatever you're making. If you're yeah. you know, vegan mm -hmm. and you don't yeah. want that and you want to use tofu or right. so, whatever, right. you yeah. can use vegetable stock instead. Oh, the smells that are marrying together and just yeah. the, the, oh, the smells. aroma. Has my palate definitely ready. right? Yeah, need that smell of vision. So. Oh, okay. My mom always said a messy cook is a good cook. Absolutely. <laughs> I wish you guys could smell this. Probably once you make this often enough, you'll get to know kind of what that smell uh, should should be like, and then you can, like you said, right. it, sometimes cooking is not you know an exact exact. That's a preference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just the smells, and you you know. Now when we're it's, gonna 
turn this heat down to a medium. Okay. You want to continue to stir yeah. that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take up some cornstarch and some beef broth, mix this together, make a nice paste. And the reason that we're doing this is because this meat is actually going into the patty dough, so you need a nice thick gravy. So in order to thicken this up, we're going to add some cornstarch. why you add the beef broth to it, to the cornstarch over there before you put it in, so it doesn't clump? Yes, right? exactly. If you pour the cornstarch into a hot pan mm -hmm. with the broth or a hot liquid, it's going to clump up and then you're going to get little tiny hard balls. Right. And you don't want that, so you want it to be a smooth paste. See how nice that's starting yeah. to thicken up? And then that's why we still have this other can of beef broth. For one, to mix it with your cornstarch, mm -hmm. and two, if this gets too thick, you can thin it down with your beef broth. Yeah. And it looks like we may end up needing to add a little bit to that. It's sort of quite a bit of... I know it smells Jeez. amazing. Oh, so good here. And again, we're cooking this on medium high. Now that it's cooked, let's give it a quick taste to make sure that all the spices Do you need to add anything. Exactly. Keep moving this here. Oh, that's ah, delicious. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. It smells absolutely amazing. And this is a, something I haven't tried. You've made it many times and shared uh, that you've made it, but but you I haven't have not had it. Here. I have yes. not been able to try this yet, so this will be a first. I think this is something that uh, your son Colin would love. There isn't a whole lot he doesn't like. He's Add it. Again, another salt to it. Another very cultured palate. <laughs> that one. For a teenage yeah. boy, he has a a broad palate. Yeah. Okay, so this is about done. I think that is about done. Okay. Even though it's not super thick, as it cools yeah. down. Short, it'll thicken it, up. It's definitely going to thicken, so you don't want to have it super thick in the pan and then it cools and you have a huge clump of yeah. ground beef. Okay. So let's just set that to the side okay. over here. We'll turn our stove off, let that cool, and let's start working on our patties. Let's check on that okay. dough and we'll also check on our peri peri chicken in the oven, see how that's coming along. We'll be right back to roll out our patty dough and fill the pockets with this wonderful. Hagerstown Ford continues to be your leader in car sales up and down the I-81 corridor. We will beat any and all competitors' prices, and we've made buying a new car easier than ever with one-day delivery better than Amazon and a return policy better than Walmart. Your satisfaction is our guarantee. If you don't like it, simply return it and we'll come pick it up, no questions asked. Why would you shop anywhere else? At Hagerstown Ford, we take great pride in our community and supporting our local student-athletes. That's why Hagerstown Ford is the official car dealership of Shepherd Rams quarterback Tyson Bagent. Our remote buying process has made new car shopping so easy, you'll never even set foot in a dealership. Simply go to HagerstownFord.com and click on the car you want to buy it, or use the Axle Auto app. It's that easy. You can order your new car on any device. Go to HagerstownFord.com and get your new car signed, sealed, and delivered from Hagerstown Ford. Welcome back. We are now going to assemble our patties. So we have our patty dough that we just took out of the fridge. It's nice and cold. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this actually in half. 
only work with half at a time. I'll lay this on yours for a minute, and then this will go back in the fridge to stay cold, so it's easier to work with. Okay, so if you want to take this while put this in the fridge and cut this in third. When I went to Costa Rica, this was the technique that they showed us to use. I was trying to do this just on a floured board, uh -huh. and it was sticking to the table. And the lady in Costa Rica used wax paper. So you see how it just peels nicely? Yeah. So then you just take a tiny bit of flour. And about how thick do you want this, what would you say? Like about, quarter inch, about a quarter maybe? of an inch. Okay. Take yours, put a little bit of flour there. Both sides. Okay. So we're going to do it again. Scoot up the center a little bit. Yeah. And we're going to take your rolling pin and roll it. Okay. See how that's not sticking to your rolling pin? You don't have to keep putting flour on your rolling pin. Okay. 
wash, which is sticky. Mm -hmm. When they bake, and four used car dealerships in three states. Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. beautiful summer salad made with mixed greens, our homemade croutons, and this is our leftover beef from the patties. So you can use this in uh, over toast, or you can put it in um, flour tortillas, mm -hmm. or again, like we said, a lettuce wrap with some cheese, or you can just eat it straight out of the bowl. <laughs> and then we have our homemade mustard dressing that we'll put over our salad. And I would like to thank Honest Donna, <laughs> the producer of TV Ted, for joining me today. It was a pleasure. It was bon fun. appetit. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers.